A guide to paying for care when you are getting care and support at home and you are not living in a residential or nursing care home. This video explains about paying for care when you are getting care and support at home and you are not living in a residential or nursing care home. There is a separate video for paying for care when you are going into or are living in a residential or nursing care home. Unlike services provided by the NHS, most adult social care services are not free of charge. This means that when the council helps you to arrange your care and support services or gives you money to arrange your own services, called a direct payment, you will have a financial assessment to work out how much you have to pay towards the cost of your services. This is worked out using your income and any capital or savings that you have. We recommend that you get independent financial advice. Assessments You must have completed a care and support assessment before having a financial assessment. This care and support assessment determines if you are eligible for support from the Council. Both the care and support assessment and financial assessments can be completed securely online. You can get an estimate of the financial contribution you may have to make by using our online calculator. This is an estimate based on the information you enter and the actual amount you are asked to pay may be different after you've had a full financial assessment. The information we ask for on the financial assessment form and the supporting information you supply helps us to work out how much, if anything, you will have to pay towards your care and support services. If you are not able to fill in the online form and do not have anyone to help you to do this, we can give you some help over the phone or in exceptional circumstances we can send you a paper version of the form to fill in. You may decide not to give us any information about your finances, but we will assume that you have savings of over £23,250 and will treat you as a full cost payer. You will be charged what it costs the Council to buy the services on your behalf, plus administration charges. Deprivation of assets If you have given away, gifted, transferred ownership to another person, or spent any assets, and you did this knowing that this could reduce or remove any future care fees, then there are circumstances in which we can treat you as though you still have those capital or assets. This is known as deprivation of assets. Should the Council consider that this has happened, then we will treat the value of those capital assets as though you still own them when we complete your financial assessment. Paying towards the cost of your care and support services when you are not living in a residential or nursing care home. This is known as non-residential. Once your financial assessment is complete, we will send you a letter letting you know how much you will need to pay, how this has been worked out and how and why any charges will be collected. We normally expect you to pay your charge by direct debit if your care and support services are arranged on your behalf and there is a weekly administration charge for the service. When you are getting non-residential care and support services, the value of any property that you own and normally live in as your home is completely ignored. There will also be an amount, called the Minimum Income Guarantee, that you are allowed to keep for daily living expenses. Some income that you may have is ignored in our financial assessment, such as earnings from employment or self-employment. The Mobility Component of Disability Living Allowance, DLA, or Personal Independence Payment PIP. Income from War Pensions, including War Widows Pensions and War Disablement Pension, and 50% of any occupational pension you receive if you are one of a couple, unless you both receive care and support services from the Council. Any savings or capital you have of £14,250 or less is also ignored and does not affect the amount that you are assessed to need to pay towards the cost of your care and support services. If your service is a direct payment, we will deduct your contribution from the money that we pay you and you must then pay this into the bank account or prepaid card account that your direct payment is paid into. There is a separate video on personal budgets and direct payments.